Hi guys and welcome to motorroids.com. My name is Karan. Today we have a new adventure motorcycle with us. It's right here in front of you. It's called the Suzuki V-Strom 650 XT ABS. Well, that's quite a long name, but this bike has been launched in India at a price of 7.46 lakhs X showroom, which is a pan India price. And at that price, what you get is a lot of motorcycle for your money as I will explain it to you right now. After having spent about 230 kilometers in the saddle of this adventure motorcycle since morning, there's a lot that I can tell you about. We'll start with the functionality aspect of this motorcycle as what it offers as unique features in terms of uh, an adventure motorcycle. So let's start with this windscreen first. This is a three-way adjustable windscreen and it's in its topmost position right now. However, it's not adjustable on the fly you do require an allen key which goes through here and then it can go down in two lower positions it's in the topmost position right now for india uh, they had to put this uh, license plate here as an addition so you know that spoils the aesthetics a little bit but that's all right you have a double decker headlight system here a high beam and a low beam the low beam is a 65 watt unit the high beam is a 55 watt bulb both of them are conventional halogen bulbs, no LED trickery here and that's good because we do like our lights to still be yellow and although we did not ride this motorcycle in the dark, we did take it to a basement area where the intensity seemed to be lacking a bit but the spread uh, was quite nice and in terms of design, now what you have here is uh, a fender where you get uh, kind of this four carbon fiber finish and you have telescopic forks here which are quite beefy for this uh, motorcycle and they're not upside down though and the other thing is you have about 150 mm of suspension travel right at the front so that's a good thing when you'd be probably riding on a trail taking this bike off the road and the unique feature that you get at this price point are these spoke wheels which only add that much more to the outdoor capabilities of this motorcycle this is a 19 inch wheel up front the one at the rear is a 17 incher and these tires are specially made by Bridgestone for this motorcycle. This is a 110 section front Batlax, while at the rear there's a 150 by 70 section. And while you can see the pattern is pretty much road biased, if you probably would uh, take this motorcycle for some serious off-roading, you might require a few knobs to be here. Uh, but these tires, they do appear they can take a little amount of riding off the road as well. The other things that you get uh, standard along with this motorcycle are these knuckle guards which do appear to be pretty sturdy, they're not really all that flimsy uh, but not the kind of bark buster stuff that you get otherwise. This accessory bar here is also an accessory which you can buy at an additional cost and if you're not happy with the performance of that headlight, all your Denali's and other things of the world can be slapped on over here. However, this engine guard over here is standard, although it's made of plastic, but it should do the job pretty well. And for being an adventure motorcycle, you get normal foot pegs here with uh, rubber inserts. And uh, not that, you know, these can come out and you have spikes underneath. However, we did ask Suzuki and they did say that if you want the spiky kind, they will be able to source them for you at a later point if there is good enough demand. Now this is a twin spa frame for the chassis and it has been paired to a box section swing arm. This chain guard here is again an accessory which if you like you can uh, get it fitted on your bike for an additional cost of course. The seat now is pretty comfortable for someone of my height. I'm six feet tall and as you can see I can plant both my feet firmly on the ground. However, if uh, you're not comfortable with this, Suzuki will offer you another seat which takes the height down by another 20 mm. So that is an option available to you if you are someone who's on the shorter side but still wants to enjoy an adventure motorcycle. Now talking a little bit about styling, you have this beak here and a lot of that styling is borrowed from the bigger Suzuki V-Strom 1000. What you have here is this beefy fuel tank which carries 20 liters of fuel and that's enormous. Again, a plus point for an adventure motorcycle. Now, we've been riding this motorcycle all day and with a little bit of early morning traffic thrown in and uh, a lot of riding on the highways and uh, a little amount of trail. And uh, we've been wringing the neck of this bike all the while. However, it has managed to return 20 kilometers to the liter. 
so that should give it a good range of 400 kilometers on a tank full however if you are light with your wrist that figure can also go up to 500 550 kilometers on a tank full without a refill so that is a major plus point for this motorcycle we haven't been able to get here on the back seat however suzuki suggests that uh, this is a motorcycle designed for two up riding which where the pillion should also be comfortable and by the looks of it this is a pretty wide seat almost as much as the rider's seat. I've been here all day long for about seven, eight hours and I have been very comfortable. You know, that's what my bosom looks like and it has been comfortable here all day. So no complaints there whatsoever. This big box that you see is again an accessory which you can buy for a little more money that you might have to spend. It can hold 55 liters of luggage. And the best part about this box is that it can be locked and if you open it, it can hold two full-size helmets side by side. I'll just show you yeah, that way. Now, if you see, uh, there's a warning sign here which says, do not ride faster than 130 kilometers an hour with the top case installed because handling could be adversely affected and uh, which is exactly what we experienced today with this top case installed and riding at high speeds what happens is the rear starts to float a little bit because perhaps of the size of this thing uh, the aerodynamic performance takes a hit and uh, that's the reason why they have a warning over there by the way there's a rack underneath and uh, there's another warning here which says uh, the maximum that this luggage rack can hold is 10 kilos nothing more than that so you can't have another passenger sitting there if you wish to now if you don't like this box for some reason and if you want to go faster than 130 kilometers per hour all you have to do is push this button over here and this box simply comes out like that you can take it home if you don't like it just make it your dustbin i don't know but it, it's pretty practical as a feature and we'll just put it here for now looks much better without the box i agree but then the practicality goes down and uh, this rack here you can put other stuff here large sized grab bars for the pillion so if uh, there's someone seated behind you they will always feel safe our bike uh, features a center stand as well which is again an optional accessory it doesn't come as standard but if you like if you want one you'd get one now the suzuki v strom 650 also features a semi-analog or a semi-digital display if you'd like to call it that and that's what happens when you put the key in the ignition position I'll tell you what all is there to see this is an analog rev counter and uh, the bike has been redlined between 10 and 12,000 rpm 11,000 rpm is where the limiter cuts in I'll tell you how the performance is in a bit and over here you have a gear indicator you have your speeds which is visible all throughout and in a very clear manner you have outside temperature which right now says 38 degrees and it is indeed hot here now you have two levels of traction control which can also be switched off and that can be done on the fly now it's uh, in the first setting right now you can select two or you can turn it off altogether. ABS, however, cannot be switched off at all. What you also see here is a clock, uh, the range for the remaining fuel that you have, and uh, that's the battery voltage, and that's real-time fuel economy, that's the average fuel economy. So our bike has consumed five liters for every 100 kilometers. So there's 20 kilometers per liter if you do the math that is a temperature gauge but from our experience until now nothing of that sort has happened and we think this bike should run a pretty good temperature without baking your feet or legs or thighs now switch gear here is really nice it's the click is positive you have this simple switch here to toggle through the display and the traction control settings there's a switch here for pass and high beam as your horn and the levers are high quality the mirrors which are really wide and they have a very unique square shape 
but uh, what they make sure is you have a very very good view of whatever you leave behind the interesting thing here is uh, we see there is uh, adjustment functionality for the brake lever here but uh, we don't find a similar dial for the clutch lever uh, which really is interesting but anyways you do have that uh, option here and uh, that's your engine kill switch you have a hazard light system and apart from that a single piece handlebar which has been finished in this sort of a uh, slightly golden aluminium kind of a shade but uh, looks nice does the job and the really functional bit here for an adventure motorcycle which a lot of adventure motorcyclists will appreciate is a power outlet which puts out 12 volts or 36 watts so if you have uh, probably a gps or a cell phone or anything that you've attached here it can be powered through this outlet here and that's a good thing so you don't have to really get messy with the socket running through your tank bag for a power bank or something now there's no adjustment really that you can make for the front telescopic forks however for the rear you can adjust the amount of preload and there's a remote dial in here you just have to move it around and uh, if you have a pillion or any load you can adjust the setting accordingly and summing things up uh, what you have here is uh, a neat looking exhaust system which sounds really nice as well and at the back you have an led tail light which looks like that when lit up and those blinkers have a conventional bulb inside so that is how illumination works at the back talking a little more about the equipment you get with the Vstrom 650 you get twin 310 mm discs up front with twin calipers a 260 mm disc at the rear both governed by an ABS system however ABS cannot be switched off at all and some people who like to go off road and like their motorcycle to slide or to lock up the rear before they enter the corner Uh, they will be slightly disappointed uh, however on the road braking is really nice and progressive and you always have this confidence no matter what speeds you're doing the way the braking force kicks in it's very pleasing it's very reassuring and we love how the braking setup works on the Vstrom 650 having said that uh, the other thing you also get with this motorcycle is an easy start system where all you have to do is uh, just push the button once and the motorcycle comes to life and now since we have fired the bike let's make you listen what the exhaust sounds like The sound we've just captured on the microphone might not really justify as what this Vstrom sounds in real life especially after you take it beyond the 7000 rpm mark where it starts screaming but otherwise it's a butter smooth motor and uh, when you're in the mood to ring that throttle it sounds really really nice Now with all of that out of the way let's talk about the performance of this motorcycle from that 90 degree V twin 645 cc engine which puts out 70 ps of power at 8800 rpm and 60 newton meters of torque at 6600 rpm so that power figure on paper is not something which will overwhelm you but out on the road and in real life that seems adequate power more than adequate and all that you will ever need for a motorcycle of this sort and all of that comes down to the magic of this motor which is unbelievably smooth and uh, if you've ever ridden the Inazuma 250 which was sold in our markets for a little amount of time this is exactly how this particular engine feels however in a larger scheme of things for the way it performs uh, the power is sent out to the rear wheel in a butter smooth manner and that engine manages to impress you the very first moment you ring that throttle and right from the word go from about 2000 rpm till about 11000 rpm where the limiter on that engine cuts it power is well spread throughout that range there's not one point where you feel that there's a less amount of horses being sent to the rear wheel or probably too many of them however 4000 rpm onwards the engine starts flexing its muscles uh, it has a really really punchy mid range 
and after 7000 rpm the engine just starts taking off and that is when that motor sends a very very tiny minuscule and please make sure that i'm hopping on very tiny and little a very tiny amount of buzz to the bars at the pegs and in the knee area and it's only because we have to tell you everything in detail we're sharing this information with you that is a very tiny buzz had it not been there this would have been an electric motorcycle now if you're someone who wants to hone this motorcycle for a change if you think about wringing its neck 0 to 100 comes real quick and what really helps in that matter is this very very sweet and smooth gearbox and an extremely light action clutch which ensures every gear shift that you make is smooth really fast quick and refined so even for someone who might be new to this category of motorcycles or even new to motorcycling for that matter shifting like a pro is easy only because of this clutch and this super slick gearbox and never did it occur that the drivetrain felt snatchy or something felt amiss it was just a turbine smooth transition from 40 and as you throttle it in the power kept building up the engine feels very smooth for that matter and for the way it sounds initially when you dial in some throttle there is a slight hissing kind of an intake sound and that really adds a little more character to that really butter smooth motor now since we are talking about speeds the windscreen at its highest setting what happens is it does tend to vibrate a little and it makes a few rattling sounds as well and probably if you put it down in a setting lower than the topmost it might not do that having said that though at speeds of 120 kilometers per hour and above there's a lot of dirty air coming through directly to your helmet and there's a lot of buffeting mostly sideways and that can get a little uncomfortable sometimes however the simple solution to that is just duck a little when you're doing speeds higher than 120 kilometers per hour and you should be just fine apart from the helmet this screen ensures that none of that wind blast is the hitting any part of your body which sits below your neck now riding position it's pretty straightforward very comfortable the way your arms reach out to the bars your elbows are slightly bent quite comfortably and even the pegs are set in a way where things are not too aggressive they're pretty forward set and this riding position is great if you want to cover long distances throughout the days weeks months or whatever you like so for that reason a very comfortable riding position and with these seats you can probably munch on those miles like you never have before now with performance being talked about let's talk about how this motorcycle rides and handles with 150 mm of travel up front in those forks and rear monoshock spring adjustable for preload the way the v-strom ride is again very commendable it soaks up everything that the road throws at it in fact we were doing speeds of about 80 or 100 on really bad patches of road and uh, although it hasn't been tuned to be squishy or too soft it finds that great balance wherein everything our road conditions have to throw towards this motorcycle throw at it it just takes it up and the bike remains very stable without any unnerving feels coming back to the bars through the chassis to the saddle and the suspension at both ends ensure that every challenge that the road or especially indian roads through at this bike can see it through masterfully the other thing the way this bike handles out on the road at speeds of about 100 120 the motorcycle remains very stable however not as locked down as you'd expect a 216 kilogram motorcycle to be now talking about on-road performance when you're doing high speeds out on the open road the motorcycle sits there very nicely if you are on an narrow straight patch of road now the one mistake that we made was uh, that uh, we were riding with that box we've just uh, disconnected from the motorcycle and perhaps and uh, that was the reason why the rear felt only slightly wallowy 
The front, however, stays put. So the reason for that could be that box and as rightly mentioned in the warning inside that uh, not supposed to be riding at a high speed but still on the motorcycle. Uh, so otherwise, this is a very stable planted motorcycle and if you have a few back-to-back -back bends where you dip in the motorcycle, take it out, dip it back in, for the way your body is positioned on this motorcycle and for all that hip and with this 20 litre fuel tank although you know all that mass is quite well centered it uh, does take a little effort for side to side transitions or for them to be quick and uh, if you probably expect uh, this motorcycle to behave like a sports bike uh, you're not really looking at the right motorcycle but for what it is for an adventure motorcycle the suzuki v-strom 650 handles very nicely and in a very neutral manner and we like how it goes about its business the suzuki v-strom 650 comes with low rpm assist which automatically raises the idle speed when engaging the clutch or when riding at low rpms assisting frequent clutch work in congested uh, down rides and uh, what it also does is prevents sudden and unexpected engine stalls when the bike is running in a low rpm range now to sum things up i have been recently on to the adventure genre of motorcycles and uh, for what the suzuki v-strom offers at a price point of 7.46 lakhs is a lot of motorcycle for that money especially if you consider the amount of kit that you get like traction control uh, these spoke wheels and uh, these tubeless tires on top of that along with that sweet sweet engine and uh, everything else combined together uh, this is a package which if you look at it is slightly expensive than its immediate competition but uh, for what it is and for what it can do it really is a package which is unbeatable at this point of time and for that very reason this is an ideal candidate if you're out there who wants an adventure motorcycle uh, which has to be premium but you don't really want to spend all that much so the Suzuki V-Strom ticks a lot of boxes and uh, if you ask us in our honest opinion uh, we spend time with a lot of motorcycles but sometimes uh, you come across few machines where you ride one and then you want to ride it a little more after that and maybe even more this is one of those motorcycles we really like what it offers as a package and you will too if you probably take a test ride and your priority matches for what the v-strom has to offer now on that note it's time to end this review here my name is karan this is motroids do subscribe to the channel like and share this video if you did and uh, thank you so much for watching until next time then goodbye <laughs>